Welcome back to another edition of the You Should Get a License podcast. And uh, well, the You Should Get a License podcast edition, right? Because if you're looking at our, our videos, then you may be listening, you may not be listening. But if you're hearing this, maybe it's an audio, who knows? Anyway, uh, we are here to once again, educate, inspire, share knowledge about one of the most underrated, uh, likely underappreciated, uh, but certainly one of the most lucrative industries that uh, you maybe have never considered, and that is a career in the insurance industry. And today, I'm so excited uh, for the guest that we are speaking with. Uh, I have known her for several years you know, in this business, uh, working together, just a, an incredible spirit. She is a native of, of California, a 15-year industry veteran, uh, has a background in music, theater, medical services, nonprofit space, the insurance industry, employee benefits. Now she spends her time you know, educating others about their own financial well wellness and, uh, and uh, really making sure that folks are prepared to protect their assets uh, at the end of the day. So without further ado, uh, I'm excited for her to share her story. I wanna welcome Phyllis Shawman. Phyllis, how are you doing? I'm great, Rod. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Thank you for, for joining us uh, this evening. I, I, I want to, you know, we, we've known each other for a while. And, and one thing that I didn't mention in your, your intro there is that you are a mother of seven. So congratulations. Yes, I am. <laughs> I birthed everyone. Yes, every, I did. <laughs> every single one. She is a champion of champions. You know? <laughs> With, with or that. crazy, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I, the, the purpose of, you know, this outlet and, and this platform is to make sure that we, you know, share those stories. So I think it's important to note, you know, with you, you being, you know, being a mother and, and having the background that you have and really overcoming, you know, adversity and, and lots of different things over the years and still being able to persist and be successful and find ways to be creative and you're the type of person that really, you know, you put, you put something in front of you, you're going to get it and you're going to be able to run with it. So I want to start off really by focusing on, you know, your area of specialty in the insurance industry. Where, do, where do you focus your time and energy uh, and, and what do you do, you know, in this, in this space that, that we participate in? So, you know, I'm a, such a big believer of protecting people's assets. And um, I also believe that financial illiteracy is rampant, not only throughout the world, but especially in the United States. And so my mission that I am part of right now is to teach people how money works, basic concepts that are not taught in any school, never mind just elementary school. They're not taught taught in any professional school, medical school, dental school, engineering school. I mean, you name it, you know, any, any, any school at all. And so I feel like people will get out of school. They might be in a lot of debt. They will end up um, going from maybe two or three jobs or just, you know, utilizing that student debt to live on to all of a sudden making more money than they've ever imagined in their entire life and they have no clue what to do with it. So what do they do? They start spending. Why? Because I worked hard and I deserve it, right? right. <laughs> and so they start buying stuff because they think that's gonna be A, the sign of success and B, it's gonna make them feel good, so they think. Yes, yeah. So Absolutely. that's what I'm doing right now. So protection is with everything. I mean, it's not just insurance, it's financial literacy, it's, uh, you know, being able to have um, things to protect. I mean, they all have health insurance and auto insurance, but we all have huge deductibles. So to protect their hard-earned money, like I always say, the money that, you know, your checking account, your savings account, cash you have in your mattress, you know, that kind of thing. Right. You got to protect that because you can be wiped out in a moment's notice. In a mo and I've seen it and I've experienced it. So that's kind of my passion. Absolutely. You, now you got your your start um, years years ago, um, two thousand and six. I yeah. want to go back a little bit further, and I want to talk about the little girl, um, Phyllis Shawman, who you know was 
learning to swim, you know, it, it, as a child and then growing up and, and, and spending time, you know, with you know, her, her father and, and grandmother, what did you want to be? What was your dream? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's see. I wanted to be a ballerina. I wanted to be a, a hairstylist, a manicurist. I wanted to be on Broadway. I wanted to be in plays. I wanted to be in the movies. I wanted to be in commercials. I never thought I'd be in insurance. That's for sure. But, um, you know, anything that was creative, that's really what I, I wanted to do. I wanted to actually very long ago, I wanted to be a commercial artist. Today, it's probably called a graphic designer, but I loved art and I really, you know, and I have great ideas and I, you know, that's what I wanted, but it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah. But, but you still have been able to utilize, you know, your, your career and the experiences within and the knowledge that you gain to still exercise that creativity. Like, oh, know, absolutely. Like, like your, your platform, you know, online and, you know, your presence and on social media is, is very prominent and you always have creative ideas and information and knowledge to share. My videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, so, that's, that's been fun. So you're still using, you're still using that, that creativity. I am. I am. I found a way to channel it. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, when, you know, when we're growing up and we have these dreams and aspirations for the things that we want to do, you know, like you said, insurance typically isn't that space, but you know, life is, life is all about that journey. Yes. Take, right. T take me on, take me on the journey that led you to an insurance career. So, so let's say you're, you're 18 years old right now. Okay. What, what's happening? What's, what's the trajectory? What's, what's life? What's, what's, Oh, I'm, I'm going to UCLA and I want to be a theater major, but my parents said, I'm not paying for you to be a theater major. So I took every possible <laughs> class I could. Um, in those days, you didn't, you know, the, the school of fine arts was kind of open. Um, I lived in the dorm for two years. I ended up, um, I was a dance major for a while. Um, I wasn't sure what I was doing. It was way before dance therapy. There was no music therapy. There was no art therapy. Oh my God, I'm really dating myself. But um, I, I just knew that I had to be, had to be involved in something like that. You know, I, I just, it, it was just a calling to me. Um, I played the guitar and uh, I, I uh, taught a lot of children's, you know, music. Nice. So uh, yeah, that's what I did. I don't think I that knew time. that about you. That you yes. That's awesome. There was one time after I got, first got married and we lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Here I am, California, and I'm in Milwaukee. I don't even know where I am. <laughs> but um, uh, I ended up singing in a bar one night. It was called Lucifer's Bar. <laughs> I'll never forget yeah. that. It was snowing out and I'm sitting there with my guitar saying, what the hell am I doing here? But, you know, I got my 50 bucks and went home. <laughs> so it go. was, you know, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you go, go from music and then you ended up um, eventually in, in the medical field, right? Well, I wanted to be an occupational therapist. So I ended up having to transfer to university of Southern California, USC. And, uh, after a semester, I hated it because there I was learning how to do, uh, you know, make a loom and, you know, and, and work a bandsaw, a jigsaw, a table saw. And then the next class, yes. And then the next class was I'm dissecting a human cadaver. And I, I it was like, it was crazy. So um, I really couldn't stand it. I, I needed more. I needed to be more me. And they wanted you to be cookie cutter. And that's not me. I can't be cookie cutter. So I went to the counselor and said, I got to graduate. What am I going to do? So she looked at all my credits. She goes, declare a psych major in an English minor and, you know, you'll graduate. So that's what I did and went into the school of education, which I fought. But my dad said, you know, go be a teacher. They got the best job in the world. They're off all the summers, you know, like, yeah, right. But um so, okay, I'm in the school of education, but I'm not just going to be a teacher. I'm going to be a special ed teacher. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I'm going to work with, in those days, they called them EH kids, educationally handicapped kids. So and I ended up being a teacher at a, um, 
uh, after I graduated and I got married, I ended up being a teacher at a Catholic home for boys. And they were, I got the teenagers, the 13 or 17 year olds who were too deviant to be mainstreamed out. It was probably the best job I ever had in my life, seriously. It was creative because I'm not gonna teach them, you know, see spot run, right? Or see, you know, so I had to, you know, I really had to be, uh, I really had to be creative with them. 